Hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on using a custom menu in Clicksteam Fusion 2.5. Uh, now whether you've got Fusion 2.5 or Fusion 2.5 Plus, it doesn't matter for this uh, because it's applicable for all of them. In fact, it's probably applicable even for Multimedia Fusion 2. So what I'm going to do is straight away I'm going to crack open a new application here. Uh, if you select your application in the Workspace Toolbar and just head over to the display tab here, the window tab. Um, you can see down here we've got menu bar uh, and we can edit. So you've got to make sure that the menu bar is selected because if you don't, then it's going to run without a menu bar. So just select it there uh, and then click on edit and you can edit the actual menu. Now there are some presets that you can import uh, and there is already some presets up here. Um, so what we'll do for the sake of this is let's just remove all of these because we're not going to need them for this uh, and you can see that about's jumped to under there so let's delete about and let's insert a, a new one so we just click on insert item uh, and we just put this option now we click OK and if you notice it's come as it's on here we don't want that so if we click on this here we can then click on the push right and it will push it underneath so it's now nested underneath the file menu and we click OK on that and run our application we can see this in effect now when we click on it nothing happens uh, and that's because we have complete control over our menus in fusion 2.5 so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to insert a quick string object drop it in the center just so we can visually see what's going on here and then jump over to the event so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to listen out for this being selected so what you do is you click on the special conditions icon go down to application menu and you can see here we've got options such as has an option been selected uh, is an option a uh, menu option checked uh, is it enabled uh, so we can check all these kind of things so we can first of all say has an option been selected then it'll pop up with this dialog which enables you to simulate or emulate the file menu so we can select which option so this option selected and you can see this is an immediate event so as soon as this happens fusion is going to render this event straight away um, so we just if we just what we do on here is um, we do menu option uh, the option selected now normally you would think oh probably best just to go checked so we can check this option if you run your application select it you'll notice that it's now checked um, when we select it when it's checked we can't unselect it and that's because we need to have the event set up here so what you do is menu option this option selected you would normally do add a new condition and check if it's already selected uh, so is a menu option checked so if it's already checked uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say it's not already checked so we'll negate that so basically this event is now saying if we select this option and it's not already checked then check it and then we can simply just copy this event down like so and negate that again so now the option is if have we selected this option and it's already checked we can then say application menu uncheck when we're on the application now you can see we can check it and it doesn't check now there's a reason for this this is why I did this tutorial video uh, based on someone asking the reason why this is not happening is because fusion is rendering both events at the same time it's saying um, you notice here that when the menu option is unchecked uh, we check it and when it's checked we uncheck it so it's rendering both applicable at the same time so the best way to go around that is delete delete this event just have the one event get rid of the action we don't need that action in there my wireless mouse starts behaving itself and delete that as well now what I would do in this instance there's a couple of things you can do um, you could have a controller or you could have um, a global value but um, typically when I'm developing applications of games I have some kind of controller active that's outside the window here and this will be the controller for the frame um, or the specific frame that I'm in so I'm going to uncheck destroy objective too far from frame I'm going to get rid of um, find detection on collisions and I'm going to uncheck visible at start save background transparent because it's outside the frame nobody's going to see it so what I can do is jump down to flags and just say uh, this option create a flag called this option 
now we can set this on or off at the default at the beginning doesn't really matter uh, but for the sake of this tutorial I'll leave that off for now now what we do is menu option this option selected what we do is we toggle a flag so we go to our controller object we go to flags and we go toggle and we, it's going to ask us which flag we want to toggle it'll be this option just like that so now what we can do is we can insert an event that says uh, alterable values flags is a flag on this option okay we can then do application menu check this option and then we can do the same below that for alterable values flags is a flag off this option okay and we can uncheck this option now when you run the application you can see that we can check and uncheck that based on the flag now you may be wondering why this works better than well this, this works and the previous method didn't and it's because fusion was rendering them both in the same event uh, the same tick the same frame tick so basically if your game's running or your application is running at 60 frames a second fusion is rendering this event sheet 60 times per second or to the best of its ability to fit it in within a second um, so what is happening is it's rendering both of the states true at the same time so it, technically it's just negating what you've done however when you're setting flags and you're toggling flags it takes a full tick to toggle a flag so if you toggle a flag on it has to come down to the end of the sheet and then back up to render the next uh, set of events before it does that plus the fact that this is an immediate option uh, an immediate event as well means that um, it's not going to constantly render uh, event one it's only going to render event one as it's happening now this is a little bit overkill because we're constantly when an event is black like this and it's true it's rendering this event 60 times a second so we don't need to do that we can simply add a new condition into this event saying limit conditions only one action when event loops and we can drag that down to number three so it's not constantly applying the check or uncheck and it'll still work in the same principle as you can see it's unchecked at the minute so we can check it and then we can uncheck it now some people may be wondering well why do i need to have some kind of active or global value to control this well you're going to need this anyway because if you have a menu in your game that has selectable options you need a way to save those options so whether you're going to use an any file or whether you're going to use an array or something like that you need to keep track of what the user is pressing because if it's a toggle like this then you need to obviously it's a toggle for a reason so whatever that reason is it's entirely up to you depending on the scenario but if you're going to have an option toggle then you need to keep track of that anyway so it's best to, st to store a flag so if you want to save this option for so say the user selects it and then they exit the application you might want to save the fact that they've checked that for the next time they launch the game and you can do that by saving the state of the flag when it comes to the any files so that's pretty much how you do it in Clicks Infusion 2.5 um, it's as simple as that three uh, three events uh, and you've got it there. The reason why I put this string in here uh, was just to show you that I can do always and then change alterable string and I can say flag state and then we can get the state of the flag by doing a string conversion we can get the flag so flags 0 to 15 retrieve this option at all times so you can vis visually see what's going on with that flag so when I check it you can see the flag state goes to 1 and when I uncheck it the flag state of controller goes to zero so you would save that in an any file if it's going to be an option that you want to pass over for the next time the user uh, runs your application but i hope that was simple enough to follow you can see you have full customization and full control over your menus in clicks infusion 2.5 and if you like this video tutorial don't forget to check out the click fusion academy where you can check out a whole range of other free tutorials and even sign up for a pro membership where you can access a massive array and a massive amount of video tutorials uh, and guides for you to follow uh, but thanks for tuning in i'll see you guys in the next video